Moving on so that we uh, give you the big overview of the initiatives, I'd like to move to educator preparation. Part of this investment comes out of the work of uh, House Bill uh, 3619 that was actually uh, addressing recommendations around strengthening the professional development um, and preparation of both teachers and educators. We believe that with funding we would be able to increase the percentage of, of highly qualified teachers that are ready to assume positions in our high need school districts, high need school district or high need areas and they would better reflect the diversity of our student population. Uh, I have data that shows exactly what that discrepancy is right now, as you can see. Um, well, going back a second here. Um, we actually have data that shows what that growing discrepancy is between the demographics of our student body and the demographics of our educators. We also want to be able to invest in university district partnerships. This work is just getting underway where we begin to um, engage clinical faculty in a school setting to be much more involved with the day-to-day -day preparation of those educators that are becoming teachers and working closely with the university faculty. When we look at recruitment, we know that it does matter because our demographics are showing that our average ages um, that we're seeing a beginning of a grain of our profession and that we also know that we are projecting a need for more teachers um, by the year 2020. So looking up, oh, there's that slide on the disparity of minority populations compared to the students that we serve in our schools. And I just would point out that the uh, example there on our uh, Latino populations is something that we believe that we can address and improve. Uh, we've looked at other states that are doing that and believe that we can um, support that. I would also point out some data here from the Teacher Standards and Practices Commission that shows us that it's not just about preparing educators of color but also retaining educators of color. So what we're very committed to within this package is looking at the support systems necessary to make sure that these candidates are fully vetted for hiring positions. We have talked with the Oregon School uh, Personnel Association around developing a joint uh, set of best practices around hiring so that we can ensure that when they start out in their profession that they are supported and feel strongly ready to um, move forward. This next slide simply shows that we see recruitment as multifaceted, <coughs> both traditional age students that might be in middle and high as well as post-secondary recruits and career changers. Uh, we will be um, able to... Rep Representative yes. Frederick has a question. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, let me go back to um, number 29. Um, it is particularly... We need to... I, it's 29. Is that one, one more. Yeah. Yeah, um, hiring and retention is an issue too. Uh, I'm not sure what it is on yours. Forward, forward now. Forward now. There Keep going. Very one more. One. One. There we are. Yeah. Um, let's be clear that one of the major reasons for uh, not have for minority teachers that use the 1469 that are unemployed is because they were laid off. Uh, last time first fired is a very important aspect of this. It is not necessarily that these folks want to be unemployed. They are. They, they would love to have jobs, but they, like the, the, the districts that are letting go people right now, they're going to be let, they're going to be the last hired first fired, and they leave because of that. They leave the state because of that. So let's keep that in mind. Yes. This is So, uh, Senator Gerard, do you... Is this is a quick question, but it, uh, Representative Frederick brought up the point about uh, last hired, first laid off sort of scenario. How, how are we going to get around the labor contract so that we can hire mo more minority students? I, I think that's a... Minority very, teachers? Minority teachers, thank you. Do you have any ideas uh -huh. about that? Senator Gerard and members of the committee, uh, I know that uh, 
efforts like this that have been successful have always been collaborative conversations around districts needs and around goals that are set collaboratively with all members at the table i've begun conversations already with members of the center for great public schools that are very anxious to look forward towards ways that we address the goals that we are set out and i encourage that those conversations would be inclusive of members of the districts and of the university preparation programs that are preparing candidates we are looking at ways to make licensure more effective to help candidates move on those pathways so it's going to be a multifaceted approach that will take a lot of dialogue and collaboration